I'm Maria and this is the Agile State of Mind. Welcome! So, following up on the previous episode about different roles, today we're gonna talk about Agile coaches. Who are they? I call myself an Agile coach, but I also call myself a Scrum Master and in my current job I'm actually an RTE. Let's find out what's the difference and we're gonna find out how to step up our game as Agile coaches. Let's see how it goes. But let me start with a disclaimer. Today, I'm going to express my opinion a lot. Of course, I'm going to back it up with the Scrum Guide and different Agile coaching frameworks. But still, keep in mind that this is just one opinion out of many. Now that we stated that, let's start. So recently I got a question from a colleague at work and he was asking, Agile coaches, who are they anyway? I am used to working with Scrum Masters. I know who they are. But Agile coaches, they seem more like priests of the Agile religion. So I wanted to start today's episode from the Agile dogmatism, a quite frequent anti-pattern. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes, instead of coaching, we find ourselves preaching. Thou shall do daily scrums. Thou shall do retrospective. In his recent article about biases, Nyland, the co-founder of Serious Scrum, writes about how to read Scrum article critically by asking questions such as why is the author using certain metaphors? For example, why is the author referring to ceremonies instead of events and using words like dogmatism, preaching, cultivism and showing pictures of churches and priests. This kind of approach alienates people. Instead of helping the team to be more efficient and get things done, we create artificial processes that they don't understand. Let's see how we can overcome this. And I have to confess that a few years ago I had my moments of being an agile priest too. Have you ever found yourself in a meeting discussing a spike and derailing the goal of the meeting for the sake of a spike philosophy? Or have you ever spent time and energy discussing why calling sprint review a demo is a mortal sin? Well, I did. Did it bring anyone more clarity? Maybe. Was it productive and brought anyone real value? I don't think so. So today, I prefer to call it a sprint review, but I don't go into discussions if it's called a demo. I just want to make sure that everybody understands the goal of the meeting. And believe me, many times they don't. The naming of the role is also misleading. I remember preferring the term Agile Coach over Scrum Master because it sounded better, more professional and more senior. I remember learning from the internet that the Scrum Master is focused on the team and an Agile Coach is focused on the greater organization and acts like a kind of senior Scrum Master. All the more reasons to prefer being an Agile Coach, right? So let me just remind you a one sentence from Scrum Guide. Scrum Masters are true leaders who serve the Scrum team and a larger organization. There you go. So the idea of an Agile coach being a designated organizational Agile evangelist is to say the least, not really in line with the Scrum Guide. Scrum Masters also serve the bigger organization. I have to tell you, there's quite a lot of bullshit on the Agile coach role circulating on the internet. And when you are new to the role, you may end up buying into it and becoming quite confused. From my experience, and it's a limited experience to Europe, the term Agile Coach was brought to replace Scrum Master for various reasons. One of them was to get rid of any confusion if a Scrum Master can work with Kanban teams. Hence, my previous episode on the Scrum Master role for Kanban. Another one would be that the company decided to have less people in the role and Agile Coaches, in their view, should be able to work with more teams. There's also this notion of Agile coaching as a service, working next to the teams rather than being an equal team member like Scrum Master is as per Scrum Guide. 
Within a scrum team, there are no sub-teams or a hierarchy. It's a creative unit of professionals working on one objective at a time, the product goal. Of course, an organization can have an agile coach dedicated to the agile transformation of the company. That's okay. But I think overall, we are just overthinking the subject. Now let's think how much coaching is there in agile coaching. So this one is really messed up and I really don't know where to begin. Let me start with this. So when somebody asks me what I do for life, I prefer to say I'm an agile coach rather than scrum master. And that's because there is this coach part that people can understand because coaching is something generally understandable. If I say that I'm a scrum master, I get only this blind look. And then I have to explain a lot, a lot more than with the agile coach anyway. I'm mentioning this because this coaching part is a misconception even among agile coaches. I met some that consider that their work is mainly to ask powerful questions. Well, I tell you what, there's not so much coaching in agile coaching, really. Coaching is among other flavors, like teaching and mentoring and facilitating is just one of them. My point here is not to confuse professional coaching with agile coaching. We are no life coaches. We help people understand and practice agile. And as opposed to the professional coaches, we are allowed to actually give advice and teach and mentor the teams and individuals to do agile better. To understand it better, I recommend watching Jeff Watts a lecture on the subject where he compares the two ways of coaching. This lecture will hopefully prevent you from going by your day and only asking powerful questions and being all flower power about the practices that the teams do that go in the way of their effectiveness. Responding, oh, you know, the teams know what's best for them when the team is struggling to collaborate and refuses to inspect and adapt their ways of working. Because guess what? They may not know how to improve their collaboration. They may not know all the practices that could help them. That's why you are there to help them, to provide them with some context, to teach them practices and tools that can help improve their teamwork and collaboration. So now let's see the different agile coaching frameworks and so we can understand how much coaching there is in agile coaching. So I would like to start with the Lisa Atkins Agile Coaching Framework, which you can find in the Agile Coaching Institute. I put the link in the Medium article below. Lisa Atkins is the author of the book Coaching Agile Teams. And this is a Bible for anyone who would ever like to work in Agile with the teams, not only for Scrum Masters and Agile Coaches and project managers in transition, but also for team leads. In the book, she explains the different stances of Agile coaching. I really like the Agile coaching framework by Lisa Atkins because it shows the whole spectrum. So we have different parts here. We have Agile in practitioner, then we have teaching and mentoring on one side, and professional coaching and facilitating on the other one. And then also for the organization service, we have technical mastery, business mastery, and transformation mastery. It doesn't mean that one coach needs to do all of these. It means that we need to know that they exist and try to specialize in which areas we want to be of service. This helps us see the wide spectrum and improve and work on our skills towards the ones that interest us most or the ones that we consider the company and teams need most. There are some other frameworks that I want to mention here just to give you the whole spectrum of different uh, materials that can help you in your way to become a great Agile coach. For example, Barry Overeem's The Eight Stances of a Scrum Master. Scrum Master as a servant leader, a facilitator, coach, manager, mentor, teacher, impediment remover, and change agent. And in his introduction to the stances, Barry coincides with all what I previously said. Also included are the most common misunderstandings of the Scrum Master role and why Barry has changed his title from Agile Coach to 100% Scrum Master. The reasons behind this change 
describe his motivation for writing this white paper. Agile coaching will provide more detail to each stance and it can give you more context on details, especially if you are just starting and you want to understand the different shades of an agile coach. There is another one that I didn't know about and uh, recently my friend Joan recommended it to me and it's called Agile Coaching DNA. It's a bit more advanced because it shows you the outcome, the what you want to achieve, the value you want to provide. You want the teams to get more ownership, to promote awareness. It doesn't say specifically how to get there. It's great to understand better the why behind our role. So I leave those three to you because you can for sure find the one that suits you best at a given time. And since we started talking a little bit about the outcome and value, I would like to move forward now and talk a little bit about being pragmatic and focusing on the outcome. So for this, I want to present you with what I call Barnett's framework. Barnett is one of the directors at OutSystem and I indirectly report to him. So he brings up a lot the distinction between an outcome, an output, an activity, which is basically a distinction between keeping busy and providing value. I think it's crucial to the roles of scrum masters and agile coaches to understand this distinction, not only for what we do, but also for the teams to understand what's expected of them. So think about activity as being busy, doing things, attending meetings. The output of the activity is what you actually produce. It's the story that you've done and you have a new functionality on your product or you created meeting minutes for the meeting you just attended. And the outcome is the value of all those previous things you did that we provide to the customer, to the company or at least to yourself. An outcome would answer the question of what's the gain of what we just did. If you keep yourself busy and even produce a ton of output, but there's no outcome, no value for the customer, for the company, or even yourself, ask yourself, why did we even have the output? Why did we engage in this activity in the first place? This should be the question that we ask ourselves and the teams every day. This is how you provide value to the company, by teaching the team the value of outcome as opposed to the output and working and understanding why they are doing what they're doing. You probably heard the term feature factory, didn't you? That's a popular term that we call companies that focus only on providing features. They never stop to think if the feature they provide, they actually provide any value to the customers and to the company. Do we get more money? Do we get more customers? We don't know. We just keep on providing more features. As an Agile coach, you should be teaching this growth mindset to the team and to the leadership to avoid working as a feature company. Help them shift their mindset. It will also help you determine what's the goal behind your role, not what's the name of your role. What's the outcome you want to achieve through your activity with the team? Do you want them to do daily scrums in under 15 minutes and create long list of improvements after each retrospective? Or do you want them to understand why iterative development will help them in their complex work and why planning their collaborative work every day helps them focus on the single objective and quickly react to any changes? And that's all for today. I hope this episode has given you some food for thought and some inspiration on your path to becoming an awesome Scrum Master or Agile Coach. Doesn't matter. Just keep on rocking. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.